Hi everyone, me again. I know you love seeing this face. Um, we're going to do the rest of the nuclear screencast and, um, and then you have to answer the study guide questions. A little bit of a change. Assume that the study guide questions are classwork. So what we're doing now is um, classwork, not considered homework. We're, we're, we're trying to figure it out. So kind of bear with us. And this time maybe I'll figure out how to stop it. Although when it goes to hide, I don't, I don't know where it goes. Oh well. So um, last screencast on nuclear. So um, we spoke a little bit about nuclear weapons and um, you, can, you can make nuclear weapons from spent fuel, which is why we don't necessarily want certain countries to have them. Okay, so 31 countries actually use nuclear energy to create electricity. So then safe storage and handling of those weapons is a, is a concern. Okay, we have low level radioactive waste and high level radioactive waste, and they're exactly what they sound like. Low level, it gives us small amounts of ionizing radiation, and then high level is like the really bad stuff that you, um, you could be harmed by. So if you look at this um, chart on the bottom, you can see that, I love being able to draw on this, um, the U.S. has a lot of spent fuel. Even France um, doesn't have as much spent fuel, and they operate like 90% on nuclear power. Okay, So how do we deal with nuclear waste? Spent fuel rods are sent to some sort of reprocessing plant to recover any usable uranium or plutonium. And then there really isn't much you can do with the leftover, but it's still very... Um, hazardous to the environment. Some of the waste can be stored in cement inside reinforced steel drums, uh, but long-term storage of nuclear waste is a huge problem. It's very difficult to find a storage site. Um, the rods inside the nuclear power plant need to be replaced every three to four years. So you're generating a lot of nuclear waste. They need to be cooled down in these water-filled pools. Then they're placed in these dry casks, then they're stored for thousands, thousands of years. So these things are very vulnerable to terrorist attacks. Okay, so here are some fun pictures. On the left here, you have these are spent fuel rods, and they're in these cooling pools. And the thing is, is with these cooling pools, you need that those pumps to keep circulating water over them. Otherwise, they'll get too hot. That water will evaporate, and then you can also have a meltdown from spent fuel. Okay. And then up here, these white things, these are um, upright concrete pads, okay? They um, are made of heat-resistant metal alloys and concrete. So here's the cross-section of that doodad you just saw. We need, uh, we need some permanent place to store. We, we just don't, we don't have storage yet. In 1985, the U.S. had this plan to build a high level radioactive waste in the Yucca Mountain Desert re region in Nevada. But the thing is, is that in 2004, everyone was like, okay, we need to make sure this area is safe for a million years. And people were like, how do we even do that? Okay, so the cost of it was 96 billion. Um, how do you protect the shipments from getting to that region? Like there can be terrorist attacks if you know where all of this nuclear waste is on the road. How do you actually protect it? Um, it, it was in an earthquake zone. How do you have rock fractures with, with everything that's going on in our world? Literally the lithosphere shifting and changing. How do you know that in 10,000 years something's not going to happen? So worn out nuclear power plants are usually licensed to operate for about 40 years. A lot of plants have received 20-year extensions. Um, the Oyster Creek nuclear power plant was one of those that received an extension, but it did recently just shut down. And they can't just be shut down and be like, okay, good, we're going to bulldoze it. Um, you need to either make them into storage sites, you need to entomb them, which is encasing them in concrete, or decommissioning them, which is dismantling them, because every single portion that has touched radioactivity is now radioactive, so you need to do something with that. So there are at least 228 large commercial ra reactors that were scheduled to be retired by 2012. And it's like, uh, what do we do with all of this stuff? So now we're gonna go into some case studies. Three Mile Island had a 50% partial meltdown in one of their reactor cores. Their cooling system failed. It was all because of human error. 
which is what most of these are. Um, but the containment unit worked and only a small amount of radiation was leaked out. It cost 12, it, it was 12 years and $1 billion to repair a partial meltdown. Okay, this is the largest nuclear accident ever in the US. Chernobyl, still worst nuclear disaster ever. They had a complete meltdown and explosion, radioactive plume that went across areas of Europe and Asia, 4,000 cancer deaths, um, about 50 direct deaths. The buildings were scrubbed and they basically just poured cement and poured cement and poured cement onto it. And I'll give you guys the links if you wanna watch all these different documentaries. Um, they're really great. Okay. Some pictures. So this was the, the radiation spread and they didn't know where it was going. Like here's Chernobyl, Ukraine, right over here. Okay. Um, Greece got nothing. Italy got a bunch like medium. And then you had certain areas of Norway and Sweden getting a lot of radioactive fallout, just kind of trickling from the air. Um, they think somewhere between 10,000 and 100,000 deaths happened because of this, but you don't know specifically what it is, what it, what it is because this radioactivity can cause all different sorts of cancer. Here you go. Those are the general plumes. A lot of effects on the environment um, killed a lot of the forests. They were bulldozed and buried to keep that radioactivity below ground. But the thing is, is it's not like, oh, in 50 years, we'll be able to go back. Like this area will never be able to be inhabited ever again. Um, a lot of the radioactivity is in the soil. Um, and there's a, there's a whole thing about the wolves and all of the, um, the animals that are, are now in this area. That's a wilderness area, the exclusion zone. So this is the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant. So this was the reactor group one, as you're seeing here, it contains reactors one, two, three, and four. So this whoo, is what we're looking at here, is this whole thing here, four reactors. Um, it's north of Co uh, Tokyo. It's a boiling water nuclear reactor. Chernobyl was also a boiling water, water nuclear reactor and Three Mile Island also a boiling water nuclear reactor, okay? But the issue here wasn't, so in March 11th, 2011, a 9.0 magnitude earthquake hit off the coast of Japan. It caused a huge tsunami. And what happened was it didn't, it didn't like knock things over, but it, what it did do was it killed the power for the plants, okay? So if you look, reactor one, two, three, and four, Okay, loss of coolant circulation. Their power went out and they had backup generators, but their backup generators were taken out by the tsunami. If their backup generators were on their roofs, they would have been fine. So you had this loss of coolant circulation. And like I was talking about before, it gets really hot and then all the water evaporates and it just starts melting into each other. Um, so reactor one, core melts down. Reactor two, core melts down. Reactor three, core melts down. Reactor four, it was the uh, spent fuel rods. And what happened is those spent fuel rods had some sort of a hydrogen explosion and it destroyed the outer walls of the building. Okay, so there was a lot of radiation leaked from those spent fuel rods, but not as much as Chernobyl. So here we go. Um, They've been rated as a seven on the nuclear event. Chernobyl was huge, like like a lot bigger. And you had the whole containment unit that went up in flames in Chernobyl. Whereas here, there were some explosions, but nothing. Um, you had smaller radioactive leakage. So where is this? Fukushima and Chernobyl. You can see Chernobyl is the orange. There we go. Oh. There we go. And um, you can see much lower levels from Fukushima than Chernobyl. Okay. Then there's breeder nuclear fission. Uh, France uses this a lot. You don't need to know the specifics of it. Um, it uses plutonium and it uses a sodium as a coolant instead of water. So it is a heavy water reactor. It's more expensive. Um, it generates this material faster than it consumes it. So your nuclear your 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 fuel source lasts a lot longer and you have less waste from it um 
blah, blah, blah. All right, and then fusion. Fusion is the process that powers the sun. We, we haven't figured out how to do this yet um, and because you have to get it up to insane temperatures. The sun's core is 15 million degrees Celsius, and that's when this happens. There is a worldwide program, um, and it would be a clean, plentiful source of energy, uh, but it's also that whole, well, let's not make a black hole and consume everything <laughs> while we're trying to do that. Um, the largest nuclear fusion experiment is in England. Um, it requires temperatures about six times hotter than the sun's core. And you have a magnetic field that traps super hot hydrogen. Again, you don't need to know the details of this. Um, but know about it. No, we haven't done it yet and know that it would be a, a huge resource of energy. Done. I tried to make it a little bit faster now. Um, please comment. Like if, if there's something you want me to go over, oh, FYI, Half-Life isn't on the AP exam. Uh, I'm going through the stuff that they cut out so that I can make you guys a screencast of what's on it and what's not on it. And what we'll do is when we're done with this, I don't know how much of unit nine we actually have to cover. So I'm, I'm figuring that out. As I go along, I'm doing screencasts when Leo is sleeping. Um, so there's there's minimal time for not having him pop in, okay? But he will pop in soon, I promise, okay? And we'll do some chicken stuff too. Um, stay safe, stay six feet away from each other, and stay home. Oh, and now I have to figure out how to stop this. Oh, and I'm setting up. Um, Quizlet, thanks for you guys. Bye.